Okay, so good morning everyone. My name is Sudeen and I'm representing that bread. So my first purpose, I will explain like why I have made this keynote presentation. So the thing is that almost uh, six years back when I was first, uh, like kind of I was uh, seeing that Google was changing their algorithms very rapidly, almost near about 3000 in a single year. And like talking about today, I think this is more than 5,000 in a single year. So I was completely shaken. I was like, like how any startups or even any mid-level businesses or even any enterprise clients can even survive with this changing algorithms. So then I traveled places, I worked on various campaigns and I found two major differences. The first one is any SEO campaign should be up to date with the changing atmosphere. So your strategy should be well defined and all the, even if the strategies are well defined, they really need to be proactive. So not following some reactive strategies and well balancing towards proactivity. I think this is what can really make a significant differences in the campaign. And the second important thing is to really know what you are doing for because once again i think just like dish mentioned so there can be 101 ways of optimizing your campaign you need to really understand whichever things will work for you or what are the things that can build the right framework for your campaign and much more so today my keynote will be regarding 23 uh, certain new strategies like if someone of the audiences are from the SEO industry, then they might relate to them. And <coughs> this is some of the latest, like undergoing strategies, then that one even can incorporate straight away. If you guys can just take maybe photos or screenshots or even notes, then you can simply deploy those directly by dealing with your SEO or IT. So let's start. Okay, now the first thing, is web page image formats now i know that like optimizing images have been one of the major areas for any seo campaign and it is true like if you really want to be on the top of marketing having a good images is the key to attract the audiences now having said that having a high resolution images or having maybe a uh, proper PNG file, proper JPEG format. Now, these things have been a bit outdated. So, recently, what search engines recommend is to use a WebP format. Now, this is a particular format which you cannot see on your usual devices like laptops or maybe your desktop or whatever systems you're using, but you can see that on your browser. So, the compression remains the same. So pretty much it does not dilute your resolution. And you can use simply just Google, like just search, compress my image to WebP format and, and it's free. Like there, there are tons of available resources on the internet. So if you just take one of the images that you want to optimize, convert that into WebP and then use that on your website, it consumes 80% less bandwidth and also your server response time increases by more than 200 percent and this is shocking because this really like if you're on low budget then you can even run a big e-commerce campaign in just a simple server so this will not even cost you much so for people who are using aws i know the costs can be very crazy but if you use a webp format your like the initial cost cutting can be highly saved Okay, now moving into the next big thing, I think uh, various e-commerce campaigns are now integrating uh, things like augmented reality on their websites. Like you can simply uh, open your phone and just like use the augmented reality feature to see how the products would look like in your surrounding and things as such. So having said that, if you particularly run an e-commerce campaign, like something as you can see over here, like view in 3D or something like this, or even something like this. So 
This is from one of the website as Sketchfab. So the simple thing what you can do is to embed a 3D schema markup. Now this is a schema markup that has been introduced by Google, but this is widely used across all the major search engines, including Bing. I know Bing is a competitor of Google, but even Bing recognizes this. So if you integrate this schema markup on your Images like particularly like obviously uh, this have to be an e-commerce campaign because uh, I don't think that there is no such technology so far by which uh, you cannot at least go beyond the e-commerce or not. So this can really be helpful for increasing your click-through rate or maybe some other benefits as well. Okay. Now this is something I want to. Uh, Especially acknowledge to the people who are very, like who are very involved in the blogging or who writes a lot of blogs uh, on an often basis. So the thing is that sometimes you see that any website can have a lots of pages, like page one, two, three, and so on. Now the thing is that you need to really better control the pagination because this can seriously lead to some troubles which you might not even be aware of like for 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 example you you might write maybe or uh, tens of blogs in a week or maybe hundreds in a single quarter but if your blogs gets hidden under the under the pages then they like like users cannot even find them after a certain period of time in that case a single robots file operation like disallow star hash page hash like, like forward slash, this can fix the entire thing. So I will not explain why it does, but the only thing I can explain is that this actually blocks the entire crawling and indicates the search engines that uh, search engine should disregard if they find any paginated URLs. Having said that, uh, you can continue your blogging journey, like build as much blogs as you want, and you do not even need to worry. Like this will work dynamically, and even if you have hundreds and thousands of blogs, so that should not be a worry. Okay, now this is one of the big factor which I like often find across various large websites. Now the thing is that. Um, like for any marketer, I think the first priority is we need to make sure that the users do not get a negative user experience on a platform. Now, having said that, <coughs> um, the thing is that like, uh, for example, if any user searches for something on your website and if they do not find that, that will lead into a 404 error. And even though that's not a big deal, but still that can cause uh, negative user experiences even across few industries like potentially if you are into a very highly competitive industry then this can devastate a certain of the user experiences now if you really want to fix this thing the most easiest way to do is to block using disallow forward slash star and question mark which means that if any query is generated automatically, which your website might not even have that page or that landing page, then this can be fixed automatically where uh, users would be shown a custom 404 page where they can be redirected to their proper uh, whereabout. And also search engines can know that, okay, this is some random query, which we should not be, be bothered about. And this works great, by the way. Even even this is a live example from my own website. So this actually helped me with uh, dealing with a lot of unwanted queries, or even for pages which I do not even have on my website. Okay, so this I'll uh, explain it simply. So for for people, even though it's a bit technical topic, now the thing is that XML sitemap is basically a sitemap or a blueprint of what all landing pages are present on your website and it's very important to keep. Now the thing is that sometimes what webmasters or website owners does is that um, people sets up a certain sitemap and they forget about that. Like uh, they like after years and years people might not even update their sitemap and uh, like they might even forget that 
which pages they have built, which pages their team is working on, their operations team, their marketing, their branding, and so on. And it's really hard for specifically for a larger team to handle so many pages at once. In that case, having an automated sitemap can be really useful. So this can be simply done uh, by this steps. Like I just, uh, you guys can just take a screenshot. Like just you guys can open Screaming Frog. Just crawl over. Actually, I had few screenshots, but unfortunately, I deleted those because it was taking the slides a bit longer, so which was I think it was unnecessary. So yeah, I have it. Yeah. And what's Screaming Frog? Okay. So uh, yes. So Screaming Frog is one of the industrial leading, uh, you can say, a software. Uh, that can scan your pages like website pages and give you a full detailed technical reports and it's free for 500 pages by the way So if you are having websites with less than 500 pages, then this works pretty great In fact, you can even block the unwanted pages as well. So that increases your bandwidth and it's free It's fast. It, it's one of the most preferred software working since last almost a decade even before some of the current tools like SEMrush or Ahrefs even being into the existence and one of my personal favorite tools as well. So if you just scan, they have an option of automated sitemap and if you just integrate that, like this will just take care of the sitemap generation all by itself. So you do not need to worry like, uh, like, like whomsoever your team member have built what pages, what are the new pages, which pages have been deleted. So things will be pretty much dynamic. Okay. So now this is an important, like an important feature which I wanted to show. The thing is that in Search Console, now once again, Search Console is a property of Google. Even Bing has that as Bing Webmaster. So this is just a console that Search Engine allows you to use for free for your campaign, where you can do a tons of SEO operation. So obviously I'll not say how much important it is to have search console on your website. That's for true. But, but my intention is that there is a particular section of removals where if you feel like there are certain landing pages which you do not need to show to the users, uh, but you want to keep them to your site because uh, it might be important for your marketing team maybe or uh, to pitch, uh, like, like, like it's good to have on the website but not to show in front of the users, then this function can really work well. Now, if anyone asks me, like, why is it important for SEO? I would say that sometimes what happens is like, if we feel like there are certain unnecessary uh, URLs, like for example, a tag pages, or even might be an author page, or might be a category page, which is kind of unnecessary to have, that once again consumes a lot of bandwidth. In this case, you can simply disregard that, and this works good. So this is one of my favorite topic, voice search optimization. And I think this is trending nowadays because uh, everyone have the hobby of utilizing Apple Siri or Google's voice assistant, even chat GPT as well to just do a search with their voice. Like even today when I was coming here, I was just uh, speaking with Siri, like where is the location, give me a direction. So voice search I think is the next big factor. And even though there are various limits on how you can optimize because it's up to search engines to show, but few things that you can do is to embed an entire detailed structured data. Now, structured data is a, is a data that you can feed in the search engines where they can understand more about the intent of your business or your products or your services. And this list can go on. Uh, you can design that both your copywriters, your online marketers, or even maybe your product managers. So the information can be quietly huge and you can just feed as much as possible in the search engines to make sure that search engines knows the best out of what is available on your campaign. And this is how things can look like, like if, if you are ranking for nearby keywords, then voice search and, and definitely a good page loading speed as well, then definitely for just here is one of our example, like if I search Google stack backlinks, we are on the voice search, like this works. Uh, this is just an example, but there is plenty of them. So this really works well, uh, specifically if you are in the competitive industry, and if you really want your users to get a single piece of information 
at the fingertips. I know with chat GPT now things got a bit more easy, but I think voice search will not lose its credibility because it's uh, it's increasing day by day. In fact, in US, 70 percentage of D mobile users uses voice search actively across Google. Okay, now this is another of my favorite part of local SEO. Now this really works well if you're catering to any brick and mortar business type, such kind of things where your particular audience is just restricted to a few diameter or maybe a radius and you might not be serving to a nationwide audience. In that case, local SEO should be up to the main focus. So few things that can be done up front is to optimize the three pack serving, like your name, address, phone numbers, your entire business information, just like what normally we have in a digital card or maybe a physical card as well. Uh, then the GMB, so Google My Business, I think this is one of the most diversified platform where you can really fit in, in a lot of information and this really works well, especially if you are optimizing for nearby keywords or like, like any specific localized keywords. Uh, like things like, uh, like what's the best restaurant in maybe the, in Liverpool or maybe in Pitt Street, so something like that. So this really works well. <coughs> okay, now the thing is that standing in 2023, it's very important to match the right intent with words to the right amount of audiences. Now, as you guys can see from the screen. It's a common advice that the informational keywords can be targeted to the blogs and the guide section. The commercial keywords or the keywords where most of the business value would come, those can be targeted towards the reviews or the category pages or even the product pages as well. And the transactional can be on the product and the service landing pages. And this is very useful because this really retains the users and minimizes the bounce rates. And I, per I personally feel that uh, this should be a go-to strategy for every marketing campaign because this really eradicates uh, the negative user experience which one can find if they land, like if they search for something and if they land on somewhere else. Like if, if I'm looking to buy a particular service and if I land into a blog, I might be irritated like, hey, come on, like I want to buy and I am in urgent need, but I'm in no interest of learning or reading about that particular blog. So this is one of the example and at the same time, this can also be a vice versa. Like I want to consume more information before I take a decision of buying. And if I simply land onto a sales page, that might conflict with my interest of even buying. So this, uh, I think this might be one of your things to discuss with the content marketing team because sometimes uh, people really mess us up here, uh, focusing wrong keywords across wrong pages. and. Uh, this secret secretly destroys a campaign from the inside. So uh, we all know that having the right keyword is very important for a campaign. So this is something we all know. It. But have you ever uh, like understood what exactly would be like a keyword of benefits? Like if you have a set of keywords, how many of them would be of beneficial to you? So this is where we call it as KOB analysis or keyword of benefits. Uh, it, like this can be simply calculated as you can see on the screen, like your traffic cost for that particular keyword, which you can find from Google AdWord Planner divided by the difficulty value of the keyword and this can give you a KOB score. This score can somewhat look like this, as you can see from the screen. And this will give you an understanding that what is the KOB score for your particular target group. And uh, even though this is a bit in depth, but the reason I'm showing this is because, like suppose if you're working on maybe thousands of keywords for a particular niche, for example, uh, today morning I was talking to Lenny, I, I'm, I think like uh, being in a law firm, like if, if suppose there are some series of law firm based keywords and there would be probably thousands of them. Now, if you are limited on budget, if you are limited with your team, copywriters, designers, social media executives, in that case, you would just need to focus on the keywords which would be having a good opportunity of benefits rather than just focusing on every single of them. This really makes the strategy a lot more proactive and efficient instead of just doing too much hard work and things like that. 
and there are other benefits as well. Uh, I'm not going to the in depth much, but and, but one thing I would like to also point is that this can also give some competitive benefits as well. In other words, your competitors might be investing heavily on pay per click or Google Ads, and this can drain a lot of your budget. And if you just do a reverse engineering and just focus on the keywords which your competitors are using. Uh, with the help of KOV, you can easily do that without much hassle and without the need to recirculate across much and much of the keywords. And trust me, this is very important because if you work on a leisure targeted <coughs> niche, then there can be thousands of keywords and you just need to focus on very particular of them. So this, this really comes help, like helpful. So uh, once again, uh, speaking about schema, I think uh, there are a lot of other schemas and as you can see, schemas can help to develop a lot of things, your like, like more rich context about your knowledge graph, your site link extension, and you can just open schema.org and your tech team can work with any of the schemas that is related to your business. For example, if you are from a publishing industry, maybe an article schema, if you are from an event-based company, maybe an event schema, if you are on local business, maybe local schema, and I have just listed seven of them, there are probably tens of thousands of the schemas, and you just need to search, and you will find whatever schema suits your business, and you can just go ahead with that, just like the slide of the 3D model, same thing, this feeds in additional information about your business, and the rich contextual things about the business as well. And this can be dynamically deployed as well, which I'll skip for now. Okay, now moving into the very last few slides. Okay, now the thing is that establishing an entity is the next big, next big factor in the field of SEO, not only SEO, even beyond that, because I think standing in 2023 and beyond, establishing an entity or focusing into branding is the next big thing. Now I know that branding can be done uh, by a lot of psychological marketing tactics and also by introducing a lot of creative skills. Now having said that, if you really want to establish brand and if you want search engines to know that, hey, uh, I'm a brand, I'm a brand of XYZ and this is what I do. So you can simply do by embedding an AMR EID and the full form of this is machine readable entity IDs. So you can simply once again generate that from schema.org with respect to your brand. For example, for Apple, this is their schema entity ID. Now, if you establish an entity ID over time, now this will not happen in a day or two, maybe a few months or maybe even six months, but once you set this thing up, then search engines will consume every single piece of information they find about your brand across the web and they will store under a single entity ID. And this way, the more strong the data goes, and this is kind of an AI as well, so the more, uh, like the more data it learns with, the greater will be your brand value. Okay, now uh, keyword cannibalization issues. So the thing is that uh, when we work on, once again, on large number of keywords, sometimes we do find that, like for different keywords, our like our site ranks for multiple pages on the first page. Now this can be fixed. Now this can be easily fixed uh, if we leverage proper targeting of right keywords across right places and if we even distribute the right framework of keyword into the right spots. So for the tech peoples out here, I think uh, JavaScript is the biggest enemy of SEO. So we need to really minimize the JavaScript serving of any campaign. So I think this should be one of the priority for anyone out here. Okay, now another favorite part is our dead page optimization. Now the thing is that sometimes when you are way too beyond with optimization, then what really happens is that you might even lose the track and you might even not know that which pages are not, which, which pages are not even active or which pages are having less attraction in terms of traffic, as you can see in terms of page views or even in terms of the impressions or the click value. So having said that, over time maybe two years, one year down the line, if you have a list of pages where there is very less clicks or impressions, you might need to change them 
like merge them into a single page. I have a slide afterwards. So you, you need to merge them into a single page because this really reduces a lot of conflict with the user experiences and a lot of devastating effect on your resource allocation as well. Okay, then uh, probably uh, the few last chapters on topic clustering. So the thing is that nowadays people work on the same niche, but they cater to various other products as well. Just like for iPhone, like if you open an Apple website, even for iPhone, they have multiple models and every single model they are still selling. Like people are still buying iPhone 6 or 7 or might be given iPhone 11, 12, uh, not everyone really needs an iPhone 14, which I believe. So the thing is that what iPhone does on their marketing campaign is that they set some topic, topic clustering model, which means that just for a particular model, like for example, iPhone, they create individual cluster of keywords. And you can do that for free using Subal, S-O-O-B-L-E. So if you use Subal and just type any of the keywords then you would get a cluster that can be done automatically for free of cost and this is really useful if you design good piece of content or blog for your readers or users because this really outlines the conflict of interest in a fine and efficient way so this was what i was talking about regarding the merge keywords so as you can see here is a good example like I was ranking for travel SEO services for two pages, technology and website security. So what I did was I just merged all of them in a single page because this, uh, in this way, uh, my bandwidth got highly reduced, which is good for me. I do not need to maintain a lot of pages. And at the same time, my SEO got a lot improved as well. And this is the last chapter, which is not SEO, but probably towards the conversion because Getting into the rank and traffic is important, but if you do not do sales, trust me, your SEO is of no use. Now, getting into the sales is, I think, is the next big factor that comes just after SEO. Because I know that people, after doing SEO, if things ranks well, they are like, our job is over, our job is done, and we are successful. But my point of view is that I think this is not, because if, if you rank, if you get to traffic, but if you do not have conversions, I think, uh, things can go pretty bad because the investment might be on danger, the return on investment can be very worse. So the last point is that people should focus on customer journey mapping. So this is a proper thing. So people should focus on creating an awareness, like an AIDAL model. First an awareness, then interest, then desire, then action, and lastly a loyalty. So uh, this is purely a content marketing thing and also like need some series of a b testing so once you acquire the ideal customer journey mapping content marketing policy or the copywriting for your individual pages i think conversions can be tracked and conversion rate can be highly improved so this is all from me and once again like the purpose of showing this was to show that seo have really worked a lot and in fact during this time of economic turbulence and specifically after COVID, I think that uh, people like, we are seeing that people are cutting down a lot of costs on paid advertisement or on pay-per-click and focusing more towards the organic growth because that is more sustainable towards the long-term success. But having said that, designing and deployment of the right framework and strategy is important. It's always better to think outside of the box. Thank you.